speaker and uh, all of uh, those folks that uh, say they belong and work for the VA. Uh, and he is uh, <coughs> Mr. And, uh, sorry, Mr. Secretary uh, Eric K. Shinseki. He was nominated by President uh, Barack Obama on December 7, 2008. He was confirmed by the Senate on January 20th, 2009, and sworn in as the seventh uh, sec Secretary of Veterans Affairs on January 21st, 2009. Uh, <coughs> the, uh, the Secretary has uh, served uh, as uh, a, a distinguished career in the, in the uh, military, uh, and uh, I was going to go through and go through all of his accomplishments, uh, but he already kicked me uh, and told me, don't do that. Uh, so uh, I think I do want to say uh, that uh, not, not so fast, Mr. Secretary. This is the only opportunity I ever get to upstage him. Uh, uh, he uh, had a very distinguished career, and, uh, and he served as the uh, Chief of Staff of the United States Army uh, at the end of his career in, uh, uh, from 1999 to uh, June of 2003, and he retired from active duty on August uh, 2003. And it's my pleasure, again, to introduce you to uh, Secretary Shinseki. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's a hot day. Uh, I know this is a Navy town. I've been told that several times. <laughs> so, uh, you know, full disclosure, I'm an Army guy. <laughs> uh, even fuller disclosure, I'm a Boston Red Sox fan, so I know I'm, I know I'm really on thin ice here. Uh, but I, I just say, I know it's a hot day, but in the Army we used to say this is good patrolling weather. Well, thank you all very much for being here, and Tom Capello, thanks, uh, thanks for uh, uh, organizing this, and Nevin, thanks for uh, a painfully short introduction, but not, just not short enough. Uh, Congressman Corinne Brown, uh, as all of you know, uh, a tireless advocate for our nation's veterans and a dedicated, hardworking member of the House Veterans Affairs uh, uh, Committee. And I'll add to that uh, Congressman uh, Andrew Crenshaw as well. And I think he said it uh, just absolutely right. Uh, when it comes to veterans and veterans affairs, uh, it's a bipartisan, or maybe even a nonpartisan issue. I get support on both sides. And if you have watched the growth in the uh, VA's budget over the last three budget cycles, you know that had to have very strong support. Not just support, not just uh, you know, words, uh, but people uh, standing firm at a time when there was so many needs out there for resources. Veterans did not come up short. There's three years of growth in the VA's budget to take care of some long-standing issues that you all know about, I've been exposed to in the last two and a half years, and we're now beginning the process of doing something about them. So to both Congresswoman uh, Brown and and uh, Congressman Crenshaw, thanks for the great leadership and support. I also had the privilege this morning, just for a very brief period of time, to uh, uh, get to meet and, uh, and greet and participate in a business roundtable hosted by your wonderful young mayor, uh, Mayor Brown. Uh, good luck to you. Uh, you know, great leadership credentials you bring, uh, but you've crafted uh, uh, a, a bipartisan, again, uh, team that uh, is going to do great things and we look forward to partnering with you, we and VA. So thank you very much for your leadership. Uh, the congressional staff members already have been introduced from other uh, staff offices. Uh, other state and local uh, officials include the uh, your head of your Veterans Affairs for the state of Florida. So uh, my greetings to all of you. Uh, James Burkhardt is here, CEO of Shands, uh, Jacksonville. Great to see you and all of your people, your doctors and nurses who are in the audience. A great partnership that's been underway between VA and Shands, and uh, we look forward to continuing that even as this project goes through. 
uh, representatives from uh, veteran service organizations. Uh, Herschel Allen, great to see you and thanks for your leadership. You and other members of the Duval County uh, Military Affairs uh, Commission. Uh, there are members of the serving military here, uh, other veterans, VA colleagues. Uh, I'm told somebody described this as a keynote. On a hot day, a keynote speaker is like a body at an Irish wake. <laughs> right? At an Irish wake, you need the body to have the party. But nobody expects them to say much. So, so I'll try to live up to that. Uh, let me just tell you that shortly after the American Civil War ended, VA began building large uh, soldiers' homes in the major cities. And so we were limited in the number we built. But they became the first VA hospitals. Eleven of those original homes still exist in our system today. Well, that tells you something about our history. We also have two children of Civil War veterans still on our roles as beneficiaries in VA who we care for. Okay, so that gives you an idea of VA's contributions over time. Uh, President Barack Obama fulfilling the president, uh, promises uh, that were made years ago by President Lincoln. And 100 years from now, the same will be true. VA will be here. Our veterans will be here. A president yet unborn, a secretary yet unborn, is going to be fulfilling the mission uh, that is going to be handed to them. And projects like this is part of that legacy that we hand down. Well, for many years, VA relied on our large hospitals to be sort of the locations where veterans came to get health care. They were flagships. They were great hospitals. Come on down. Come see us. The fact is that veterans didn't live in the immediate vicinity of those hospitals. They lived in lots of rural areas, lots of inaccessible areas. So at about a decade, a little more ago, uh, some bright person at VA uh, decided that we would try to reverse that model instead of, here we are VA, come to us. They began the process of building community-based outpatient clinics like this one, of vet centers mobile clinics on wheels, outreach clinics, moving further and further away from the flagships to get out to those remote, in some cases, inaccessible areas where veterans chose to live. The healthcare model was a reversal, reversal of what had been come to us. It is now moving in the direction of where veterans chose to live. Clinics like this one are intended to provide about 90% of a veteran's day-to-day -day requirements. So your lab work, your you know, primary exams, all that kind of stuff will go on here, 90%. But in those 5 to 10% of the requirements where acute care, uh, serious specialized uh, requirements exist, then our flagship hospitals are still there. And yes, you're going to have to travel to them because that's where the specialists are located. And that's sort of the concept. Uh, veterans have a role in this. They have a role to play. Uh, they must help if this entire system is going to work and that role is active involvement in their own well-being. And this, this is not coming from the secretary. This is what our clinicians tell veterans each and every day. It's based on the concept of continuity of care and long-term wellness. Well-being for all of us, not just veterans. Well-being is more the product of good living rather than a phys physician skills. When you get around the needing of physician skills, you know, it ain't good living anymore. So diet, exercise, weight control, regular checkups, attitude, Attitudes count. No doctor prescribes these over the counter. Okay, so that's our role in it. Uh, let me just uh, add that we have also developed a telehealth system that links our major hospitals with clinics like this one that extends the reach of those specialists and overcomes the tyranny of distance. Uh, last two years we've invested $284 million in telehealth. We see this as the next major breakthrough in healthcare delivery, and therefore we're investing to be at the leading edge of this. We couldn't do it without the support of Congress. They review our budget and uh, challenge us, ask questions about it, and when we uh, are able to defend it, uh, then we get the support. So uh, hundreds of millions of dollars going into telehealth. The result will be routinely more convenient, higher quality, consistent health health care for veterans, especially, as I say, in those remote areas. Uh, this new clinic we break ground on today is uh, more than two and a half times the size of the old clinic. It will provide state-of-the-art advanced diagnostics 
and services, including CT scans, MRIs, PET scans. Now, I know you all have heard those terms. I bet you none of you know what those abbreviations stand for. So I'm going to help you out. Computer tomography, CT scans. Positron emission tomography, PET scans. Now, you never have to remember, but once in your life, somebody told you what they stood for. <laughs> Improved lab and minor surgery facilities and expansion of services for women veterans. We're going to be 15% women in the veteran uh, population by 2028, and we need to get ready for them. Greater mental health and telehealth services. And so, all said, I'd like to thank um, uh, Congresswoman Brown for helping us uh, get this started to build this outpatient clinic. And Congressman Crenshaw for his support because he sits in the appropriation side of this. Uh, most of you know that uh, Congresswoman Brown has been pushing for this larger expanded clinic for many years in Washington. Uh, I've known about it for two and a half years since the day I arrived. Uh, it was the first order of business between us. Uh, as I walked by her, she was seated uh, on a bench. She said, you're coming to Jacksonville, you just don't know it yet. <laughs> so here I am. Uh, I thank both members of Congress for their great support. So as we begin to build this wonderful facility for veterans, this is also a time for remembrance, reflection, and respect for the selfless service of all of our young people in uniform. And I say that knowing that within the last week we, we had a terrible loss in Afghanistan of some very, very tough, determined uh, uh, you know, SEALs and other special operators. And we all know that there are some families going through some very hard times right now. So keep them in your prayers. We honor them best by providing cares and services uh, for the veterans who do come home, taking care of their buddies. God bless those who serve and have served this nation, and may God continue to bless this wonderful, wonderful country of ours. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I want to thank everyone again for all their hard work and dedication to making this facility a reality. I especially want to thank all the employees of the North Florida South Georgia Veterans Health System who work so hard to ensure our nation's heroes are treated each day with ability, skill, and will. I'd like to ask you one last time, all the employees here, please stand up. At this time, Chaplain Young will provide the benediction. Following the benediction, please enjoy the refreshments that are